In this video, I'm going to continue talking about Fourier series. Um, in particular, I'm going to discuss the formulae. So I won't derive them here. Uh, I will post a PDF uh, online, though, uh, which shows the calculations that I'm skipping over. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to um, describe uh, the formula for the coefficients of the Fourier series. So let's imagine we have two situations that we're going to address. So when we use let's say Fourier series to solve a second order differential equation with a periodic f of t on the right hand side, an inhomogeneous term, um, we're going to use the Fourier series to represent that function and I'll have formulas for those. And apparently different but really fundamentally the same, I'll also give formulas for um, for functions of space and we're going to use those when solving uh, PDEs, for example the heat equation, and the difference between these two cases is um, there's some technical points uh, in, involved in solving the heat equation that lead us to use uh, a half period in, in the Fourier series calculation. So I'll mention that or go into that later in another video, but for now I'll just write down what the formulas are that we're going to use for each of these two and just draw the um, the parallel between them so you can see that they really are the same. Okay, so um, what we want to do is we want to take the function f of t, which is not a sum of sine or cosine terms, but we're going to try and approximate it by a sine of cosine and sine terms. In fact, we're going to start off with a constant term capital A naught, and we're going to add to that a sum from n going from 1 to infinity, a n cosine n well, let's see here. Now, what we said we wanted is we wanted 2n pi divided by the period t multiplied by a little t. And then we also want to add n going from 1 to infinity of bn sine of, same expression, 2n pi over t, little t. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the idea of integrals as inner products. Um, to calculate each of these coefficients. So just like we do inner products or dot products to find the um, components of vectors, um, and some of the things that I'm skipping over here are showing, for example, that each of these functions that I'm treating as vectors are actually orthogonal to each other. They're perpendicular to each other. And so that's uh, the calculation that I'm going to omit here, but you can look at that um, on the PDF later. Okay, so the formulas that we end up with are capital A0 is equal to 1 over t, uh, that's 1 over the period, integral. Now we could do this integral from 0 to t or from minus t over 2 to 2 to t over 2. We just have to cover one full period, but I'm going to choose to go from 0 to t just because I'm thinking about using this to solve an initial value problem where t equals 0 is somehow an important point. So we're going to take the integral of f of t to get a naught. And then to get the a n, we're going to take the integral. We're going to, first of all, there's a coefficient up front 2 over t. And that coefficient comes out from the calculation of doing this inner product. And we're going to still be integrating over one full period. And I'll choose to go from 0 to t again. And now we take f of t and multiply it. This is the dot product that we're doing here against a cosine term. And that's going to be the cosine of 2 pi, 2 n pi over capital T times little t dt. And then b n will be a similar integral, 2 over t, and I'm going to again choose integral from 0 to t of f of t, but now we multiply by sine of 2 n pi over capital T times little t dt. Now you'll notice the formula looks very similar for all three of them, except the a naught is missing a 2 in front of it. So what we often do is write this one as a naught, little a naught, divided by 2. And this is defining a new coefficient, uh, little a naught. And the only reason we do that is because the formula for a little a naught is going to look like the other formula. So we have 2 over t now, integral from 0 to t, f of t, dt. Now you could choose to use capital A naught if you prefer to memorize that formula, or if you want to have them all be a little bit more um, comparable, then you could use this formula here. But remember that when you put this one into 
the expression above, the sum, that you don't put a naught, you put little a naught over 2. Okay, so that's what we get when we do them as, um, let's say, functions of time for solving these second order ODEs using the method of undetermined coefficients. But if we are solving a PDE, then we might be given an initial condition g of x on some interval 0 to l. And then the tricks that we have to use to satisfy boundary conditions involve reflecting the function and extending it to an entire interval minus l to l. And so when we do that, we're going to use uh, approximate g of x by a Fourier series. I'll write it with the same coefficients, but now you'll see that I have uh, an l in there, cosine of n pi over lx plus the sum from n equal 1 to infinity of b, oh, that should be an n here, and bn sine of same n pi over lx. And so the difference between these two formulations are here in the argument. Here I have n pi x over l, and over here I had 2n pi over t. Now in the in the x case, in this case, l is half the period, and in this case t was the full period. So in a way, what we have is um, you, you could put a 2 in front of this and then put the full period down here, and then they would be the same. 2n pi x over the period and 2n pi t over the period. So that's why these two look different, but they really are the same. And now when we write down all the formula for the coefficients, we get a naught is equal to 1 over 2L, the full period, integral from minus L to L, g of x dx. And now when we do this for solving the heat equation or other PDEs, uh, we're going to have symmetries that we've built into our function g of x, and that'll allow us to simplify this integral um, to be uh, doubled and integrating only from 0 to L. But the general Fourier, um, uh, Fourier coefficients will be uh, integral from minus L to L. Now, we're just I'm just choosing to go from minus L to L because of reasons that have to do with solving the PDE, but I could have gone from 0 to 2L instead, for example. All right, so um, what are the other coefficients? A, oh no, that's not a naught, those are a n's. So the a n will be one over L, which is a one over half the period, which is really the same as what we have here, except it's written as two over t instead of one over two, t over two. And then I'm gonna integrate again from minus L to L, g of x, and now I'm gonna multiply by the cosine n pi over L x dx. And bn will be 1 over l also, integral again from minus l to l of g of x times the sine of n pi x over l dx. And so those are two different ways of writing down the formula. Oh, we also sometimes define this version of a0 so that a0 can have a similar looking formula and I get in that case integral sorry 1 over l times the integral of minus l to l g of x dx and so these are the two types of form uh, sort of forms that you'll use or um, that will be useful for uh, calculating the coefficients of Fourier series either for you know, solving these method of undetermined coefficients problems when you have a second order ODE with a periodic right hand side, or when you're dealing with solving PDEs and you have all sorts of tricks that you do in defining the function g of x so that it has nice symmetries so as to satisfy your boundary conditions, you will have, you might want to use these formulas over here instead. But they are equivalent. All right, so in other videos, I will go into more details on uh, actually calculating the coefficients in some examples and saying more maybe about uh, symmetries in different cases.